Another great feature of Geosoft with, when it comes to databases is you can do a cross database lookup. I think that's what it's called. So let's look here. So I've got two databases. Merge one here has station one, two, gives long lat and the brigade gravity value. Over here in the lookup database, I've got station one, two, long lat, and I've got a height value, Z. And so I'm going to take this height value from this database on the right and move it into this database on the left. Very important again, make sure that your header um, names are the same and make sure that your line um, names are the same. How you do that again, you right click on your line name and go to edit. Make sure these numbers are the same and make sure your type is the same. So I click on the one that I want to move the data to. I go to database tools, database utilities and cross database channel lookup. So lookup database, I'm probably going to get this wrong, but I think this is the lookup one. So it's where I'm looking to get the data. I click next. Uh, I think I'm right. Let me just double check. Okay, so the main thing here is click on the one you want to add the data to. Go database tools, channel, um, database utilities, channel lookup. Lookup database, I'm going to look over here. Click next. There are different methods. You can check this out yourself. Ex do the values have to be exactly the same? Um, do okay. Well, sorry. Let's before we get there. Reference channel. So what channel is it going to look on this side and say if this is the same as this channel here, then move the values over. And so for me, it's longitude um, because that's. Well, I mean, it depends. I could, for me, I can actually use anything. Let's use station. Um, sorry, let's use station. So if the station numbers are the same, um, move it across. And what data channel am I moving across? I'm moving channel Z from here to this left-hand side. And for me, I can do exact because I know my values are ex uh, exactly 1 and 2 and 1 and 2. Sometimes you have to do nearest and you can give a, a search distance. So maybe they're not exactly the same, but you're okay about that. Maybe you've got one station that's a bit to the west, and but it's like a, one meter out and you're okay about that. You can put a search distance here. Um, I haven't really used too much of these ones at the bottom. Check out the help here for more details. So I'm going to say exact. I'm going to click OK, and you can see it's moved this across. It literally said, well, here's station 1, 2, here's station 1 and 2. They're the same, exactly the same. Let me move this Z across to here. So, yeah, it can be very useful um, if you've got two data sets or different stations close to each other. Maybe you've collected gravity data. And then somebody else previously went and surveyed in the elevations. But their elevation stations aren't exactly on top of your gravity stations, but they're close by. And so instead of gridding the elevation data and taking um, info out of a grid, you actually want to know exactly what the height is as the closest elevation station. And maybe it's five meters away. So you would do the same thing and um, database tools, cross elevation lookup, and you would play around, look at your different methods here, and probably say nearest and do five meters. Big thing here to be careful about is what are your X and Y values in your current database. So for me, I haven't actually defined them, but they would be my longitude and latitude. And so I'm in degrees. And so you just need to check, is the search distance in meters? Because if you put one here, it's actually going to be in the, uh, what's it, the units of your X and Y. So one here would mean one degree, which is about 100 meters. So you just need to make sure that um, you define your X and Y here to be in meters. Um, just in case you're not trying to do that, you would go coordinates, um, new projected coordinate systems, because I want to convert my la longitude and my latitude to be in meters. So I've defined my X and Y. I'm telling the computer or GSOF that it's geographic coordinates. And I'm defining an X, let's say UTM 35 and a Y in UTM 35. I go to next. This system is not geographic. It means you've got a datum, a WGS 84 datum, and you scroll down to the bottom here and you get to UTM 35. I do have a video on converting coordinates where I'm sure I'll go into more detail about it. And I click OK. OK, you can see I wasn't clicked on this uh, database. I was clicked on this one. And it's put in the X and Y. But you actually have to tell Geosoft what your, that those are the coordinate systems. So even though it says X and Y, Geosoft doesn't know that those are your X and Y. So I'm telling it here, X channel is that, Y channel is that, and I'm telling it the coordinate system. It should remember projected 
you click OK and now you know GSOP knows because it's put these blue X and Y. And so now when you go to your database tools, database utilities, cross-channel lookup, um, sorry, I was clicked on the wrong database, you must click on the one where you want to put the data. Here I can now put in meters because I know I know it's looking in meters, but now that I've actually said that, I can't still be certain because I haven't done meters for this left-hand database. So literally, click cancel, click on here, and follow the same procedures to get X and Y here, and then I'll, and set it as your coordinates, and then you'll know it in meters. So sorry, that was a bit of a roundabout way, but hopefully it explains to you how to look it up the different channels, but just remember, be careful what your coordinate system is because that will affect your lookup distance. But give me a shout if that was a bit confusing.